What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today I've got a pair of knives to show you from my friends at Wingman EDC. Um, if you haven't heard of them, I think you're going to, soon enough, uh, we are now carrying them in the store on bladezilla.ca. So I'm going to show you this knife, kind of go through a uh, couple little things, talk about it. More than anything, it's a cup of coffee, so let's not get too crazy. We're not going over every angle, every little detail, we're just chatting. So, uh, you know, stock up the beer, stock up the, or top up the coffee, whatever you want to do. And uh, we are going to get started. For reference, I will show you sticker on each. So, Gorizont Mach 3 Frosted Satin M390 Layered Tie. And uh, the Gorizont Mach 3 Demosteel. So, we're going to kind of compare both of these guys and uh, see what we can get into here today. So, I'm going to cut into having these guys open and then uh, we'll do some comparison. So one of the super, super cool things I love about the uh, Wingman DDC stuff is how they're packaged. They come in these cool zipper cases, super padded, and not an issue uh, transporting the stuff, you guys, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, in addition to that, most of them come with, I'm just going to crack open one of these and show you, they come with these tools for the pivot hardware. So there you go. If it wants to uh, focus, I don't know if it will, but you get your cool tag and your tool for working on the pivots. So. Pretty cool. Um, otherwise, this is what we're here for. We're not here to uh, talk about tools and pivots. Um, so let's crack these guys open. And now the microphone is right down in the corner here. So hopefully it's not too loud. Uh, and I might change the background for you guys. This one's a little reflective. Okay, there we go. All right, so as you can see, Two very similar knives, uh, just done ever so slightly different. Um, the main difference being obviously the blade steel being used. One is Dana steel and twice the price. And there's a couple small little differences which we'll kind of review and kind of go over. But as you can kind of see, all very, very different in the uniqueness of the inlay on both. Um, I believe the Dana steel one is uh, as well bead blasted and then satin finished versus just a standard bead blast and if I'm a betting man which I'm not um, I think these guys are done by our friends over at uh, Riet which is pretty cool because the packaging is very similar to what you'd expect um, but anyway and we're gonna park this over here so this guy is the M390 version as you can kind of see you've got the, the cool planes on there really nice pivot as well I love that the proprietariness of it it's always cool the inlays, which, uh, you know, you can kind of get lost in the light balances around, kind of changes at different angles, which is always cool. Uh, the frames, I believe, are skeletonized inside, if I do recall, and it's definitely light, so you can feel inside, or sorry, you can look inside, take a look in there. It's all skeletonized, which is awesome. And then uh, the back, we have that inlay again. Metal lock bar insert, which is beautiful. And then, like I said, this one is bead blasted instead of uh, bead blasted and then satin finished. So let's just kind of compare the two here. If I want to see this. So this guy, I believe, is the demo. Yeah. Let's put that guy to the side. So here we go. I wasn't too sure which, vid or which uh, version of this I wanted to do a video on, so I just figured, hey, why not do both and show both knives? So you can kind of see... There's a little bit of uh, like a horizontal satin finish. You can see it more so around the pivots up here. See the difference? I, I don't. It's hard to show on camera, but you can kind of see the two if they're together, which is a nice little touch. There we go. Yeah, I like that. So it's definitely a finish uh, on the flats. I, I'll have to look that up. Because I'm curious, but I'm pretty sure that was the, the big difference. The inlays are the same. Both have the cool backspacer, which is awesome. I'll show you here. That backspacer looks like a, a nice, beautiful welding line. If any of my uh, welding homies appreciate that. Beautifully done. And then I will uh, fire this guy out here for you. Ooh, beautiful. And you know, if, if in the damn steel world, like, it's... Um, you know, the beauty of that blade is that it's a it's a little heavy, so it's going to probably be a heavier knife, but it's, it's going to fling out a little bit harder. I'm curious to see how they balanced that weight 
Uh, and here I am assuming it's heavier, but uh, I don't know. Uh, it usually is. Um, but the beauty of it is they're all different, right? So you see how this part here is nice and loose. That's what she said. And then it tightens up towards the end. Yeah, so some some knives have like a really tight kind of lining on them, and others are more uh, just kind of standard. Yeah, I shouldn't say standard, just different. They're all very different, like a fingerprint, depending on how you kind of hammer the rolls of the, uh, the material together. So pretty cool. So you'll see as well. Lots of skeletonization inside, and I was curious, these kind of four lines, what is it? yeah, four lines, are they the same as well? Yep, it's always nice to show them side by side and not have the bump, <laughs> but uh, yeah, every little detail, I, I think, other than the frame being just that little bit different, including the little fuller there, appears to be the same. As far as I can tell, you tell me though. There's always somebody who seems to know these things a little bit more than me, and I'm not claiming to know. Um, you know, I just uh, wanted to show the knives, see what we're looking working with. Um, in hand, and I'll do some size comparison, I'll weigh them and see. Um, in hand, very nice and smooth, very rounded. Um, not, no hot spots. It's definitely a thinner knife, but it's it's got some width to it. Um, so it's you know I, I'd say a large hand knife versus a, a medium. It's definitely a nice, ergonomically, there's no kind of hot spots or anything like that. Which is awesome. Rounded edges all the way around. It runs on bearings as well, so it, it's uh, very smooth. And uh, obviously this one is factory new. But uh, medium detent as well. Just a really smooth, really smooth. I'm kind of curious to see the difference between the two. Very, very smooth. Very smooth. I can already feel like it has to be lighter. Oh yeah. But I love, I love around the pivots too. You get this collar on there, which just looks so nice. As well. And I kind of get like these like spider web vibes on the inlay. Which looks real sharp. You know, if I'm, if you're asking me like, which one would you buy between the two? It depends. You know, it's, I think this uh, M390 frosted one was like 400 bucks US, and this was 800 bucks US, somewhere in there, uh, give or take five bucks. Um, so is it twice the knife? I don't know. I know that they're going to make way less of these, and they're all individually numbered, I believe, as well. Uh, at least the certs are and the boxes are. Um, I don't know if that is actually labeled on the knife anywhere, uh, or if it's just the certificate of authenticity, but I'm assuming it would be. Um, but don't quote me. I'm usually wrong. I'm gonna grab my light here and just kind of flash it inside because I want to show you guys the skeletonization before we start doing some comparisons. Kind of see some of the. Uh... Oh yeah. Nicely done. There's some huge pockets in there, and I think the inlays actually kind of follow through it. That's cool. Beautiful, and I love uh, I love on the Dama stuff because I've had a, a number of Shirogorovs come through with uh, with Dama. I love how on them, like little things like the flipper tab when you look at it from the side profile, if it ever wants to focus. I love seeing the rolling in in those parts and like through the through the jimping. You know, it just looks so sharp, so cool. And then down the blade, as you can see. Just cool to kind of see all that. Um, in terms of in hand, obviously there's no jipping on top of the blade, uh, but you've got the nice rolling of the Dama steel. It's comfortable as, uh, you know, if a knife fits your hand, you don't need it, so to speak. You can choke up right to the tip if you want. Who's cutting like that? I don't know. But, uh, you know, very comfortable in hand. And I love this one, how it's got like four or five stripes right at the end here. Just boom, boom, boom. That's nice. Super cool. And then I imagine the design of this is A, it looks cool, but B, I imagine it's functional. It usually is. Or should be. Let's see the tolerances on this uh, flipper tab coming out here. Oh, yeah. Come on. There you go. Oh, yeah. 
Good stuff. I loved seeing that. That line looks like a, like I said earlier, it looks like a weld pool. Um, so in addition, obviously, to the, the tool that is proprietary, which, you know, some people love, some people hate. Um, me, I'm kind of on the fence. But uh, the fact that it comes with it is a huge win. So if you want to take that off. Other than that, look at the knife from the side. There is no visible screws on, on the show side. That's what's so cool, in my opinion. You flip it around, and I believe there's uh, some torques. Just focus here. Yep, so one, two, three torques. One being on the lock bar insert, I believe, unless that's from internally. I could be wrong. The metal lock bar insert, I believe, is attached internally. So what would that one be doing from here? What's that holding in place? Maybe it does actually attach the lock bar insert. Lock bar insert obviously is uh, to aid in, um, you know, the material between the blade and the lock bar. Kind of smooths that process out, you know, get lock stick. But uh, super, super cool. So I guess the other one would just be the, uh, the detent ball. Boy, this has lots of, uh, lots of color in it. I think they're calling this, uh, I think they're calling it like dark tie or layered tie or something. They're like just to kind of work around certain things. And I actually, like I should have said earlier, I don't actually know who makes these. I think some of the Wingman EDC stuff is made by Riet. That's what I thought it was. Uh, but maybe they bounce around, not too sure. Never know. It's the best tech or whatever, but uh, I'm assuming it's Riet. Based on the packaging. And let's check the centering on this guy. Oh yeah, beautifully centered. Tight tolerances. Just a well-made knife. I'm going to grab that. Uh, M390 version here. I know there's always going to be someone that says, "Hey, I'm tired of seeing the Dama version. I want to see, I want to see the standard version." Very smooth, same lines. Other than, ooh, do I see a little, or maybe I just missed this, a little pinch here. I do see a little pinch. Is that the same? Did I miss something on the other one? Wouldn't be the first time. I don't think that uh, this one has that same pinch. Am I crazy? Huh, not too sure. It's hard to hard to tell without getting right in there, but uh, maybe there is a little... No, 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 no. I think, uh, I think they both have it. Just harder to tell in the rolling of the Dama. That's... Pat on my back to see that. Um, anyway, so that's cool. So you get a little pinch in the nose here, which is cool. A little fuller. That's cool. Um, I love the planes. Uh, I think that's just such a cool little logo as well. And then on the other side, um, I can't recall who the designer was. Andre Grigorov, if I'm not mistaken. Grigorov, I can't, uh, I'm not the best at pronouncing the last names, but I believe that's his name. And also, did we get that on both the uh, options? We did. So inlaid in the demo there, it's just a little more subtle. You get the AG, and then hidden, and you should see the planes in here. I love the little details like that when they're hidden in there. The Wingman EDC logo, that's cool. I love seeing that kind of stuff. But same knife, same design, just finished ever so slightly differently. And then we'll get into some weights here and some size comparisons um, in just a sec here. So let's let's do some of this. And what we're going to do today is we're actually going to spread these out because what better way to show the profile size of a knife than to have both sides of that knife showing off the lean size of the camera. So let's grab our Neon to start. Neon Custom Division from Shiro to give you a size comparison, which I would say is kind of pretty similar all the way around. And I'm dropping my tape measure here, but let's grab, let's get that up top here and let's get, a, let's get the measurement. So coming in at uh, just under eight inches, just under with a blade to the choil, about three and a half. So it's a good EDC size, which is why I love the Neon as a comparison, but the Neon even feels 
Like it's just a tiny bit shorter, but similar blade-wise. So there's there's that. I will grab my Vegas V cards, which is another small boy, as Kevin puts it. Nice size there as well. And then uh, from similar kind of category, we can grab our, uh, our Hog House Model T. Also very similar, but a bit of a different shape to it. Uh, but draw point, very thin, slicey knife. Uh, I've got a Rask hiding beside me here as well. I apologize if it has uh, fingerprints on it, but there's your Grimsmo Rask. I've got a Rosie, an Oz Roosevelt, which will look huge width-wise, uh, just in the handle, right? But lengthwise, much shorter, stubbier, kind of a knife. Uh, what else do we want to throw in there? I could do my tactile. This I opened almost every box I have in here with my tactile knife. There you go. Much thinner, much smaller. And then, uh, why don't we do a Kami? Sure, go off Kami. There you go. Also, uh, similar lengthwise, just about bang on, actually. So, to give you an idea on the size, it's not uh, it's not huge. It is very thin in the handle. Or I shouldn't say thin. It's smaller handle-wise, but a little bit thicker. So, if you're into that, and uh, you, like, you like it like that, then it's great. Got a Resenti as well, kind of getting on the larger size comparison, but uh, here's a Resenti Large Nirvana 4, also very cool. And uh, I think, oh, I got a Hattie on, I'll do that one, everyone loves the Hattie on, I don't see too many of them. And there, there's a Carbon Hattie on, so there's, uh, I don't know how many knives to compare it with, but uh, a number of them. And hopefully that was a, a pretty cool comparison on these guys. I'm going to grab my scale here, and we're going to do a quick weigh-in. Uh, any guesses? Like, I think I think I read somewhere they were like three and a half. Does that sound right? Three and a half ounces, something like that. Okay. So we're going to do the frosted M390, and I'm just getting a little cloth here. I don't like putting metal on metal. There we go. So frosted first. 3.6, so pretty close. 3.6, okay. And the Dama, maybe 3.7. 3.7, 3.8, so a little bit more. Uh, a little bit, 3.8. Let's see. 3.8, yeah. So it's funny how you know, initially on, earlier on, it's like the first thing I noticed, I was like, oh, it feels heavier. It's very subtle, but when you have them side by side, obviously, it's a lot easier to uh, to kind of see what's what's heavier between the two. But uh, nonetheless, super cool. Super cool knife at a great price point for like Dama, like 800 bucks. Or even if you want to try the design out and feel the inlay and try it, like, it's a great knife. Um... You know, Wingman EDC punches well above their weight for their designs. You know, a lot of them, you know, at this at the timing of this video, I'm, I'm dropping uh, Wingman EDC into the store. And uh, you look through, you know, who they're collaborating with on some of their designs. And it's, you know, the John Barkers of the world, the Lee Williams of the world, using kickstop technology in a lot of their stuff. Like, it's really cool, uh, punching well above their weight. Tom Mayo designs as well like just really solid uh, solid guys so I, I'm stoked to have them in the store and to have a, a number of these available so uh, the camera is just really fighting trying to see which one it wants to focus on that's funny uh, maybe maybe I'll put them that doesn't matter but <laughs> um, yeah really really cool knives I think uh, I think that if you're a uh, traditional medium large knife guy versus a large extra large knife guy you're going to really appreciate the size in your hand and then the weight obviously being three and a half inches which is kind of the money spot money spot money shot for uh the edc knife category you know when i when i carry stuff not knowing what i'm doing today it's typically a production neon 
and or you know sometimes a, a quantum uh, or an f95 like those are kind of my go-to three sizes do i actually use them not really you know the one i use is a bench benchmade bug out or a tactile uh, i can't even remember what this one's called the tactile turn or something um but yeah this guy you know that's one gets a lot of a lot of use opening boxes just because it's beside me cutting tape which I think that one's actually Magna Cut, which is cool. But um, when I did post this originally, I think someone commented on my Instagram post saying, is the designer of this uh, Craig Brown? And no, <laughs> no, he's not. Um, I, I can see the, the similarity between the uh, some of their designs, the FSDs, as well as some of their earlier models, but um, no. He has nothing to do with this as far as I'm aware, unless he collabed with uh, Andrei Grigorov, which I don't think he did. Um, I just think it's a cool knife. I think they're going to do well. I, I don't uh, I don't know how many of each there were made. Like, Typically on these fancy Damasteel versions, there's not many. Like 20, maybe 30, 40. Um, I wish I would have actually read the literature on this prior to filming this, but I feel like sometimes just giving you my feel on it, um, prior to reading it and being influenced by literature where I'll bring up all oh, the the three lock bar bend cut technology it's like no one cares like I'm just using that as an example I know that's not an actual feature um, but I'd rather just give you my first unguided insight into the knife into the feel into the look and then I feel like that's how a lot of people uh, you know want to see a knife versus being sold a knife um, they'd rather just see it for what it is. And that's what I like to do, you know, coffee stop style conversation. Get to see and feel the knife. Hopefully I don't cut my hand. And, you know, it's just a cool design. Very boxy, right? But simple, very dressy, yet, uh, you know, inexpensive for what you get. And obviously, you know, you're at that magic price point where once you kind of pop through the, the five, six, seven hundred buck US range, you start to get some serious heavy hitters. So you've got to add features and technology to it that traditionally the other ones have. Like if you're going to try to say, hey, I want to sell this for Chris Reeves money. Well, you know, that's when you throw in cool inlays and, uh, you know, pivot collars and backspacers, things that maybe Chris Reeves don't have um, when you're competing for that, you know, overseas made. And you gotta use a you gotta use a maker who knows what the heck they're doing and punches out good quality and you know skeletonized internals and bearings and you know you gotta be able to do that to compete because a lot of people are super loyal to buying U.S. made. Um, is U.S. made the end all be all? Of course not. Um, you know sometimes U.S. made is not good and uh, you know there's there's lots of stories about problems on any brand let alone U.S. made ones, so, you know, the QC, quality control portion of these knives, um, a lot of the time should mean more, but, uh, you know, I get it. People like made in the U.S. or made in Canada, and, uh, you know, I love it, right? I, li I like it too. You know, who doesn't like a, a CRK or, you know, Hinder or any of those U.S. stuff? SNGs, Grimsmo's, you know, I've got cases of them beside me too. So, um, you know, I like Russian-made knives as well. Hint, hint. Love them. I only have about, uh, I don't know, 60 or 80 of them. But um, that's another conversation for another day. Because I don't need to think about that kind of negativity in my life. Specifically what I, what I spent on them. <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a jokester today, guys. Jokester. Anyway, well, I think I'm going to wrap things up there. Um, so I've talked about, obviously, the fit in hand, the Damasteel versus M390, which I think if you're going to try it, you go M390. It's just a hell of a deal, unless you really, really love it, and then you go Dama if you like the little bit heavier weight. You're getting the same features at the same, at half of the price in the M390, but, uh, you know, you're getting super limited edition on the Dama, which is super cool. And uh, the design's awesome. I love the knife. I, I think it's going to be a hit. And I've got a bunch of these coming in, uh, which is awesome.
So hopefully grab them while you can and you know let your friends know or hoard them for yourself and uh, you know enjoy them. But this is so oh, that's the thing about Dama. I'm just gonna move this so I don't touch it. But I love on Dama. Love looking down and seeing these rolls. I am way too easily distractible. Ah, that's my favorite part of Dama is the flipper. And then looking at the top of the blade right there. Just such a cool knife. So cool. Alright guys, well check it out in the store, bladezilla.ca. I'm going to have a bunch of Wingman EDC stuff coming over the next uh, few months. And, uh, you know, would love uh, love some feedback on the brand and on, on the knife. Um, you know, I, I've got a handful of them here and I think they're, I think they're going to really do well. Because it's just really good good features and good designers and, and really well made for the price. It's really punching above its weight class. I think they're going to be popular. So check out the store, bladezilla.ca. And, uh, you know, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. But more than anything, just keep watching the videos. Leave a comment. Have fun. You know, follow me on Instagram. Send me a message. Uh, that's, that's what it's all about. First and foremost, this is a, a labor of love. So... Alright guys, till next time, have yourselves a good week, and we'll talk to you later. Peace.